everyone. Um, inshallah, today we'll start from uh, Surah Al-Anfal, Juz 10, Ayah 1, inshallah, from Ayah 1. <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الأنفال قل الأنفال لله والرسول فاتقوا الله وأصلحوا ذات بينكم وأطيعوا الله ورسوله إن كنتم مؤمنين إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم كما أخرجك ربك من بيتك بالحق وإن فريقا من المؤمنين لكارهون يجادلونك في الحق بعدما تبين كأنما يساقون كأنما يساقون إلى الموت وهم ينظرون وإذ يعدكم الله إحدى الطائفتين أمنها لكم وتودون أن غير ذات الشوكة تكون لكم يريد الله أن يحق الحق بكلماته ويقطع دابر الكافرين ليحق الحق ويبطل الباطل ولو كره المجرمون إذ تستغيثون ربكم فاستجاب لكم أني ممدكم بألف من الملائكة أني ممدكم بألف من الملائكة مردفين وما جعله الله إلا بشرى ولتطمئن به قلوبكم وما النصر إلا من عند الله وما النصر إلا من عند الله إن الله عزيز حكيم إذ يوشيكم النعاس أملا إذ يوشيكم النعاس أملا منه وينزل عليكم من السماء ماء ليطهركم به ويذهب عنكم رجج الشيطان وليربط على قلوبكم ويثبت به الأقدام إذ يوحي ربك إلى الملائكة أني معكم فثبتوا الذين آمنوا 
سألقي في قلوب الذين كفروا الرعب فاضربوا فوق الأعناق واضربوا منهم كل بنان ذلك بأنهم شاقوا الله ورسوله ومن يشاقق الله ورسوله فإن الله شديد العقاب فذلكم فذوقوه وأن للكافرين عذاب النار يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا لقيتم الذين كفروا زحفا فلا تولوهم الأدبار ومن يوليهم يومئذ دمره إلا متحرفا للقتال أو متحيزا إلى فئة فقد باء بغضب من الله ومأواه جهنم ومأواه جهنم ومأواه جهنم وبئس المصير فلم تقتلوهم فلم تقتلوهم ولكن الله قتلهم وما رميت إذ رميت ولكن الله رمى وما رميت إذ رميت ولكن الله رمى وليبلي المؤمنين منه بلاء حسنا إن الله سميع عليم ذلكم وأن الله ذلكم وأن الله ذلكم وأن الله موهن كيد الكافرين إن تستفتحوا فقد جاءكم الفتح وإن تنتهوا فهو خير لكم وَإِن تَعُودُوا نَعُدْ وَلَن تُغْنِيَ عَنكُمْ فِئَتُكُمْ شَيْئًا وَلَوْ كَثُرَتْ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تُوَلَّوْا عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْمَعُونَ ولا تكونوا كالذين قالوا سمعنا وهم لا يسمعون إن شر الدواب عند الله الصم البكم الذين لا يعقلون ولو علم الله فيهم خيرا لأسمعهم ولو أسمعهم لتولوا وهم معرضون يا أيها الذين آمنوا استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحييكم 
وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَأَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصًا وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ صدق الله مولانا العلي العظيم جزاك الله قاري انس اور تو یو امام تعریف بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته good to be with everyone in this uh, blessed night of ramadan uh, let's, uh, inshallah, reflect on uh, this beautiful surah, Surah Al-Anfal, the spoils, the spoils of war. Um, this is a surah that essentially comes to demonstrate with a live example uh, the beautiful definition of tawakkul, of dependence on Allah Azza wa Jal, and ultimately asks the question of what is it that constitutes success in our lives, what constitutes victory, triumph? And how is actually triumph achieved in life? We might have in our minds definitions of what constitutes success. Think to yourself, what is it that gives you this sense that you've accomplished something in life? And does it really measure up to authentic definitions of or divine definitions of success or triumph? Allah is going to take us through a mini journey through a live historic example here of what constitutes success so that we can actually subscribe to a higher standard, the definition and the standard of Allah Himself. And then what does it take to achieve this? Lest that we cling on to causes not sufficient for achieving success. Because as human beings living on this earth, we have our ways of or or, or uh, understanding of what it takes to get somewhere in our lives, to you know succeed at a project or at a task. Allah says not only is the definition of that success different from his perspective, but what does it take to get that successful outcome? is also different. It turns out that it has to do with not only tangible means or uh, factors, causes, but it also integrates within its spiritual causes that you and I need to be aware of tonight. The surah, uh, the backdrop of the surah is, is the historic battle of Badr. That's why I said it's a lively, a vivid example of, of success or victory that Allah is going to be talking about. So the backdrop is this is this battle, and uh, the surah is, was revealed right after the battle of Badr that, that I'm sure all of us are familiar with. It took place in the second year of Hijrah, after the migration of Now this is, why is this battle significant? First of all, this was the real armed uh, confrontation between the community of the believers in Medina and the Meccans. And remember, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, immigrated, left, with the community of Muslims who were a minority in Mecca and they were under persecution and the Meccans, the autocracy of Mecca, went out of their way to harm them physically, emotionally, really go after them and, and they actually seized their properties after believers left Mecca. So they left having lost a lot, although they gained something much bigger and it was the plan of Allah for them to go to Medina. Fast forward in the second year of Hijrah, um, it, it came to uh, the Rasulullah Rasul Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, became notified that there was a caravan, trade caravan led by Abu Sufyan, one of the leaders of Quraysh, coming back from Syria. And this uh, caravan had a lot of booty in it, had a lot of uh, merchandise, expensive merchandise. And they figured, listen, you know, he gathered the companions and they had their, you know, they consulted, thinking to themselves, should we go after this caravan? Because we've lost so much in Mecca and the Mecca seized our properties. This is kind of a little tiny, you know, kind of uh, uh, opportunity to, to get something back. So they indeed set out, they made a decision and they set out with a very small contingent of people, of soldiers who are not really that well equipped. Remember now, this is really the, the main lesson of this sort of what constitutes victory 
And what are your plans and my plans ultimately? And Allah Azza says it's all in the hands of Allah. He set out with one intention. The intention was to intercept the caravan. So Allah says in the Quran, we know this meaning. You have a plan and I have my plan and the ultimate plan is Allah. That's why Islam is called, you know, it, it has to do with this concept of surrender, Islam, to surrender to the plan of Allah. And we need to have our plans. But Allah says, rest assured that my plan trumps your plan. So they set out with this intention to intercept the caravan. That's all they wanted. And they figured it's not risky. It's, it's safe. This caravan that has 40 soldiers with it that, that were not even armed. So it's going to be an easy thing. Easy win. We'll get the booty and we'll return back. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. They set out to do this, but the announcement of Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Medina made its way, rippled out in, in, in the various corners and ultimately reached Abu Sufyan, who was leading the caravan back and he was going to be passing near Medina. So he was alarmed and he immediately changed his route to avoid being intercepted. And he sent a messenger to Mecca to aid from the Meccans, from Quraysh. Indeed, Mecca, you know, Quraysh, when they heard of this, they flipped out. They assembled a massive army of a thousand soldiers that were so well equipped to go out and intercept the Muslim contingent and not, you know, essentially take them out, annihilate them. And indeed, Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not out for battle. That was not his intention. And Allah speaks of this reality, but yet Allah allowed all of this to happen because Allah wanted to accomplish a bigger goal. You see, we have our plans and Allah has his plan. Only if we trust in the plan of Allah. So they, the, the believers end up not being able to intercept the caravan. The caravan changes its route. And then the, the Quraysh uh, army arrives and they camp at a, at a place near Badr, the well of Badr. The believers understood what was happening and they figured, you know, they understood that there was an army out to get them now. They end up camping at a point also near the other camp. But here's what Allah says in the in this surah. He says, you both had no idea, neither the small army of the Muslims nor the bigger army of Quraysh had an idea that they were going to meet at that place and that the caravan was going to change its route and nobody met anybody. Everybody ended up in different places, but yet Allah destined the two armies to come so close to each other and to camp out at, 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 at sort of, um, you know, uh, at places, you know, on, on both ends of this valley of Badr without even knowing. And Allah says, you did not intend this, did you? So the Muslims intended for what again? To intercept the caravan because it was safe. And it didn't involve battle and it didn't involve sacrifice and it didn't involve the possibility of losing lives. But Allah says, I intended for you something else that you thought was going to be bad for you. And that was the battle. Now who would have thought, think to yourself, that the battle is a better option? In our calculations, even in the calculation of the Muslims at the time, that was not a good thing. That was... Uh, an option fraught with not only risk, the possibility of loss of life, and how are they going to meet these difficult odds? A small army of 300 that is ill-equipped, facing a much bigger army of 1,000 with all the equipment and arsenal. Clearly, they had no chance whatsoever, but Allah Azza set them up. And this happened, by the way, on the 17th day of Ramadan. Amazingly, all the epic battles, most of the major epic battles in the history of Islam, took place actually in Ramadan. We tend to think of Ramadan is just a time of worship. SubhanAllah, monumental historic events that served as, as turning points occurred in the month of Ramadan while the believers were fasting. This is extraordinary. So indeed it speaks of the powerful aid of Allah and what he summons us to, the sacrifices that he summons us to in the month of Ramadan, a month of exertion indeed. So here they are, they camped in different places and Allah speaking of the events that happened, how he set that up and he says, وَلَوْ تَوَاعَدْتُمْ if both parties agreed or made an appointment to meet each other, they would not have met each other in that fashion. It means it was impossible for them to meet in this fashion. Even if they made an appointment themselves, the circumstances would not have been set up for them to come and really be face to face in that matter. Again, the lesson is it's Allah who drove both armies to this confrontation. 
because he wanted the battle to take place. The question is, why did he want this battle to take place? There could be a loss of life. Here's what happened. The battle took place, brothers and sisters, and Allah sent powerful aid from the heavens. He actually set up the circumstances for the Meccans to be even before the battle started. He wanted to demonstrate his power. Allah is teaching us in the surah, all victory comes from Allah. You have to put your dependence on Allah, but you do your part. Allah Azrael sent rain and it made the ground under Quraysh muddy. He sent wind upon them and he sent fear in their hearts. Remember, hearts are in the hands of Allah. You might be terrified of something, a human being, of uh, people that are against you, of uh, you know a difficult project or task. Allah says it's nothing. Nothing can stand in the way of Allah. His will, his power trumps everything, trumps everything. His word is the final word despite our efforts. So Allah put fear into the hearts of Quraysh and they were terrified even though they had no idea that the army of the Muslims were small. And then Allah rattled them by sending that rain to, to really hit them at their core while they were camping. And then here's what he did to the believers. They had no idea. They were also afraid. They did not sign up for the... Yes, they did not sign up. They wanted the easier option, and they didn't. They didn't attain it. Allah made them sleepy, and put all of them to sleep that night before the battle happened, so that they can get some rest. This is amazing. Allah literally gave them rest, while at the same time the army of the of Quraysh was rattled and was on muddy ground, and they were just in 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 a in a in, a, in an extreme in a situation of extreme stress and distress that when they woke up in the morning, they were already in bad shape. Meanwhile, also Allah Azza wa Jal made Rasulullah have a dream on the night before. And in the dream, he made them, he, ma he made him see the army of, the, of Quraysh to be very tiny. Why? To give them boost of confidence. So when he woke up in the morning, he's like, this army is nothing. So Allah boosted their confidence by making them see the numbers of Quraysh to be very tiny. And even Quraysh thought that the army of the Muslims were tiny so that they can go over the battle to them because Allah wanted that battle to happen. When the battle happened, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, brothers and sisters, that day, it is reported that he was raising his hands so high implore and beseech Allah, begging Allah, begging Allah. Allah, Ya Hayu, Ya Qayyum, the living, the sustainer, the living, the sustainer, Ya Allah, the living, the sustainer, invoking Allah with his names, Bi rahmati ka nastaghith, Ya Allah, we beseech you for your rahma, for your rahma. So Allah sent him a message that indeed I'm sending angels. And Allah says in this surah, it's not the angels that will achieve the victory, but I'm sending the angels to comfort you. Remember, the angels are ultimately servants of Allah. Allah comforts us by reminding us, I have angels protecting you. I have angels making dua for you. Do you think Allah needs angels to execute and accomplish his end? Does he need angels to aid someone to achieve victory or to succeed at a task? It isn't. It is for your comfort and my comfort to say, I'm here with you. Don't worry. So Allah sent the believers because they needed an assurance because they were outnumbered. Don't worry. I have angels with you. And indeed, Allah says in this surah, when they started throwing their arrows, subhanAllah, they were hitting their target. And the angels were throwing arrows at them, but the, even the believers didn't see this. And before you know it, they achieved a devastating, devastating victory that knocked out the mushrikeen, the, the, the idolaters of Mecca, Quraysh. They were completely wiped out, brothers and sisters, in that battle, despite their numbers. It was an epic victory, epic triumph against all odds, impossible to happen. Just as the meeting was impossible to happen, yet Allah set up all the circumstances for it to happen and the victory. The question is, why did he do this? Think about it. Before this battle, the believers were afraid. You know, who are we? We're a tiny little community. We don't have the arms. We don't have the status. We don't have the, the, the power, the authority, the autocracy of Mecca has everything. Allah has really in a little tiny, this, this battle that happened in Ramadan, made a small band of fighters achieve an imminent victory against a much bigger army that was so arrogant. What Allah did was completely humiliate Quraysh in that battle and boost the confidence of the believers and demonstrate for them 
with, with such vivid, powerful sign of Allah Azza wa that indeed Allah is with you. And that all victories from Allah. All you have to do is depend on Allah Azza wa and do your part. You do your planning. You do your strategizing. And this is required for success. With any task that we have in our lives, Allah demands that we plan, that we take our steps. These are the physical means. But what this surah says is that victory is not going to be achieved like this. Victory will be achieved when we do the physical preparation, but not forget the spiritual preparation. The victory is from Allah. And Allah will accomplish His end. In fact, He says in this surah, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى He says to Rasulullah and the believers, you think you threw your arrows and you hit your targets, you didn't throw anything, nor the angels. It was Allah who threw the arrows and made them hit their target. This is a very powerful message from Allah to all of us. We're not in battle, but we are engaging life. All of us have difficult tasks. Think of the tasks of working with our families. Um, work. Think of dealing with the adversities that we have in our lives. All the things that stand against us, that overwhelm us, that make us feel, you know, we're overwhelmed. And the odds are stacked oftentimes against us. Allah says, don't worry. No, 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 don't worry. He says, success with that task with that project, through that adversity, is going to be happening from Allah. It will occur, and Allah will arrange things for you and me. In a matter that is so mysterious, He'll arrange the circumstances for, for, the, for, for the outcomes that He wants to be accomplished, to be accomplished, despite your will and my will, and despite what we lost plan will work. But Allah assures us, don't worry. Just place your dependence on me. Surrender to Allah after you've done your planning. And beautifully, he says in the surah something that is often missed by us as Muslims. He says, Ya amanu idha laqeetum fi'atan fatbutu wa allaha kathiran la'allakum tuflihum. Pay attention to this practical lesson. We need it in Ramadan. This is one of the things we need to nurture our capacity to do. And, 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 and uh, uh, you know, make a part of our kind of uh, daily regimen with Allah when we do things. Allah says, all oh, you who believe when you meet a force, anything that is difficult in life, not just the force in a battle, but anything that is difficult, fathbutu, be firm. Means stand up and have courage and have valor in you. Don't be afraid by anything. Don't lose heart by something that is difficult because that means in that moment, we forgot that Allah is with us. But then here's what he says. He says, remember Allah with much remembrance so that you may attain success. Here's what he's saying. When you're about to um, undertake a difficult project, difficult task, something that is really hard that you are not thinking that you're going to succeed with, whatever it is, working with a human being, a child, son, daughter, dad, mom, something at work, whatever it is. He says, do your plans. Be firm, depend on me, but I want you to remember me and do dhikr of Allah. Whom amongst us thought that for us to succeed with this task, I actually need to sit, sit down and make dhikr of Allah. It turns out making remembrance of Allah by you sitting down to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Invoking Allah is the spiritual means for you to succeed with that task. We never oftentimes think of devotion to Allah, doing salah and doing dhikr of Allah as an actual means to bring the mercy of Allah and bring the aid of Allah for us to succeed with our task. I ask you, when was the last time? Think to yourself, when you had, uh, you know, a, you know, subhanAllah, a, a, an exam or when you had a tough project again or a task that you thought to yourself, I'm going to go for 10 minutes and just make dhikr of Allah so that I can succeed. With that task, if you did say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Allah says the believers should be doing this because aid comes not just through physical means, more important, it comes by means of depending on Allah and making dhikr of Allah. That's why the dhikr of Allah is so important, brothers and sisters. It's not only just getting your reward and tranquility in your heart, it actually brings the powerful aid of Allah, just as He did with Badr, the battle of Badr. Another important lesson in this surah also speaks about the spiritual components of our experience. Allah speaks of his remembrance, but there's a beautiful verse that I love and adore so much, uh, speaking of the importance uh, of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa verse 33, where Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah says, 
to all of us. He says in verse 33, Allah will never torment them. As long as Rasulullah Muhammad وسلم, is with them, that's number one. And Allah will not torment them as long as they make istighfar. What is istighfar? It means to seek the forgiveness of Allah. So think about what Allah just said to you and me. Allah will never torment us. We'll never suffer. We'll never suffer, no matter what the adversity is. So long as Rasulullah is with us, now Rasulullah is not physically with us, but he's with us in spirit. And the other condition is, as long as we make istighfar, which means to sit down and say, Astaghfirullah, 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 Ya Allah, forgive me. Ya Allah, forgive me to say it sincerely. Did you know that when you make istighfar to Allah, Allah will not only, as he says in the Quran, open the doors of the provision from the heavens, means that your wealth will be multiplied. You will have blessings in your family, with your children. You'll have aid with your affairs. But Allah further says, I will not torment you. No trial in life will torment you. Allah is going to give you the peace and the strength that you need through that trial, through istighfar and by the blessings of Rasulullah Muhammad wasallam. So the surah is in its entirety comes back to beautiful, powerful spiritual tools that you and I can use right now in the month of Ramadan to get the mercy of Allah. Not only, as I said, to just get reward, and the reward of Allah is incredible, but also to get us that aid that we desperately need in our lives. Indeed, through these spiritual factors and means and causes, and remembering ultimately that this surah is about Allah's planning. Allah is the ultimate planner. And when he orchestrates uh, the details of events, he has a purpose. So think to yourself about your trials. And remember, Allah is orchestrating these details. It might take a long time for you to see the outcomes, but Allah is planning everything and he's with you. What a beautiful, reassuring message. Allah also reminds us in the surah, I wrap up with, if you want also success, a community should never differ. See, what happened with the believers is that after they achieved the victory in the battle of Badr, they started arguing over the spoils of war. That's why it's called the spoils of war, the surah. So they were initially afraid and they were banding together, but then when they achieved victory, they're like, oh, look at what you've done. Now we're going to split the spoils of war. And they started arguing over the spoils of war. Allah says that's not victory. Victory is when your aim is Allah, not the spoils of war. Don't look for the spoils of war. Don't look for life. When your intention is Allah, Allah will get you the spoils, but it's not a spoils of war. So Allah says, be careful not to argue. Be careful not to quarrel. No community on earth, no group of people on earth, Allah says in this surah, will ever succeed, will ever have strength, as long as they're fighting and arguing with each other. The greatest blessing is when Allah harmonizes hearts and bands them together. Allah's happiness and joy comes, but his aid comes to this community. So Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, I say this because it's a, it's a reminder to all of us about our own community here at ICCP and the need to continue to bond together. Bond together in affection and supporting one another and enjoying one, each other, making dua for each other and not getting into petty things because inevitably communities as they become bigger, and they enjoy more blessings, they start to quarrel. And wallahi, look around us in so many masajid in our area, how many masajid, subhanAllah, communities have fell apart, fallen apart because of argumentation and differing. We pray, wallahi, all the time for the community of ICCP that we never get into this because that will assuredly make us lose the aid of Allah Azza wa Jal. And um, with that, that, inshallah, I'd like to, um, you know, on this note of dependence on Allah, because brothers and sisters, this is surah about depending on Allah, Hazrat. Allah is the ultimate planner, Allah is the giver. And in this surah, He asks us to sacrifice. Sacrifice. He says, No aid will come to you as long as you don't sacrifice. And He had the believers in Mecca, in, in Medina, sacrifice to achieve that great victory. That's how Allah accomplishes His goal. I remind myself and everybody here tonight, brothers and sisters, not to forget our community, the masjid, the masjid, the masjid, brothers and sisters. When we're quarantining as we are right now, we're sheltering in place. Bear in mind, there is no uh, collection of, of money in the masjid taking place right now. And this is a really uh, um, an important call, Wallahi, brothers and sisters, that, I, that, I, that we're all issuing to the rest of the community, asking you for your support right away because there is no collections happening in the masjid. On a Friday, where we collect a lot of the funds to run our uh, operations, every 
every single Friday, we used to, you know, alhamdulillah, collect a significant amount of money that allows us to support and sustain the operations. There is no in-house collections happening. It's literally zero, and it's not coming in. So we're not having as much coming in at the moment, and we need to make up for this to run the operations of the masjid. Even though we're in our homes, the masjid's expenses are still costing us money. The masjid operations are still continuing, and the lights have to be still on. And uh, the subhanAllah, the costs are high as you're aware. So if it's not you and me supporting the masjid, then who will? So tonight, brothers and sisters, we remind you in this blessed night of Ramadan, when the, really the doors of the heavens are open, to please, please immediately, inshallah, go to the website and make your donation to ICCP to support the operation of the masjid and also, inshallah, to support even the building of the bar. But we really need your support tonight. And Allah blesses and multiplies the rewards in the month of Ramadan. Remember this. And inshallah, we're eligible for, for zakah money as well. So we, inshallah, hope and expect that every community member will at least allocate a portion of their zakah for this center. And remember what brought us together is Allah through this center. And if we're appreciative of the gift of Allah, has the wajal, brothers and sisters, because we're now experiencing distance from the masjid, then doesn't that compel us to show gratitude to Allah for this gift so that it doesn't disappear. That's how we preserve the gift, by giving. And Allah is looking at all of our hearts in this month of Ramadan and saying, who's going to trust in me? Who's going to show me that gratitude that he gives from the wealth that I've given them? Remember, whatever we give is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah promised to multiply and multiply and multiply. Just bear in mind, when you make your pledge tonight, and I really urge you to get, go ahead and make that, brothers and sisters. Every single person in this call, Wallahi, Ask Allah for help and say, Ya Allah, okay, go to the website and make your donation, but I want you to do something else. Step aside after you do this and make dua to Allah that he fulfills your needs because sadaqah is a means to fulfill your needs, inshallah, and to relieve you of your afflictions. We ask Allah to make us among the givers. We ask Allah to make us among those who are grateful to him in this blessed time of Ramadan. We ask Allah to bless our ICCP and to bring us back together under its roof. We ask Allah to make us among the generous who give for his sake, who sacrifice for his sake, believing and trusting in his promise that he will multiply, bless us with abundance and good. We ask Allah to open our hearts tonight to go make that pledge for ICCP to support its operation and to allow it to be a place and a space that nurtures and fosters the remembrance of Allah. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen wa Allahumma ameen wa salli lahum ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'een. Anas, inshallah, if you can close us with the dua. الحمد لله الذي من علينا بالإسلام الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وله الحمد في الآخرة وهو الحكيم الخبير الحمد لله فاطر السماوات والأرض الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الدل وكبره تكبيرا اللهم لك أسلمت وعليك توقف وكلت وبك آمنت وإليك أنبت وبك خاصمت وإليك حاكمت فاغفر لنا ما قدمنا وما أخرنا وما أسررنا وما أعلمنا أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر لا إله إلا أنت اللهم لك الحمد كله 
وإليك يرجع الأمر كله على نيته وسره فحق أنت أن تعبد وحق أنت أن تحمد وأنت على كل شيء قدير اللهم لك الحمد كالذي نقول وخيرا مما نقول اللهم لك الحمد بجميع المحامد كلها اللهم لك الحمد كما حمدت نفسك في أم الكتاب والتوراة والإنجيل والزبور والفرقان اللهم لك الحمد أكمله ولك الثناء أجمله ولك القول أبلغه ولك العلم أحكمه ولك السلطان أقومه ولك الجلال أعظمه لك الحمد كثيرا لك الحمد كثيرا اللهم لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم لك الحمد حمدا يملأ الميزان ولك الحمد عدد ما خطه القلم وأحصاه الكتاب اللهم لك الحمد على ما أعطيت وما منعت وما قبضت وما بسطت اللهم لك الحمد على كل نعمة أنعمت بها علينا في قديم أو حديث أو خاصة أو عامة أو سر أو علانية اللهم لك الحمد في السراء والضراء ولك الحمد في الشدة والرخاء ولك الحمد على حلمك بعد علمك ولك الحمد على عفوك بعد قدرتك ولك الحمد على كل حال الحمد في الأولى والأخرى والآخرة الحمد الحمد لله الذي لا ينسى من ذكره والحمد لله الذي لا يخيب من دعا أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يرفع عنا هذا الوباء والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين Allahumma ya arham ar-rahimin, ya akram al-akramin, ya Allah, you are the most beneficent, you are the most gracious, you are the most merciful, in your hand is all power, in your will trumps all wills, ya Allah. We beseech ya Allah on this blessed night of Ramadan that you send your peace and prayers upon Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, send your salutations upon him, a salutation that will earn us your pleasure. that will expunge our sins, ya Allah, that will allow for the adversities in our lives to be washed away, ya Allah, for our stress, ya Allah, to be, to be relieved, ya Allah. We beseech, ya Allah, and we implore you on this night that you send upon us your mercy, ya Allah. Enfold us in your mercy, ya Allah. Surround us with your protection. Protect us and our parents and our family and our community, ya Allah, from in front of us, from behind us, from our left, from our right, from above us, and from underneath us, ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive our sins, Ya Allah. Forgive our sins and our shortcomings, Ya Allah. We ask, Ya Allah, on this blessed night of Ramadan that you choose us to be among the people of Jannah, Ya Allah. Grant us entrance into Jannah al firdaus With our families and our community, Ya Allah, have mercy on the deceased, Ya Allah, on those that we've lost in our community, Ya Allah. Cure the ill, cure the ill, grant them full healing and recovery, Ya Allah. Lift this affliction off of this earth, Ya Allah, that has afflicted us, Ya Allah. We ask, Ya Allah, that you alleviate the suffering of those who are suffering, that you cure the ill, Ya Allah, that you elevate all of us to you, that you grant us your pleasure, Ya Allah. Make us among those who surrender to you, who depend on you, who place their trust 
and their tawakkul upon you. Make us among those who are grateful to you. Make us among those who prostrate you and who bow to you. In total submission to your Allah, make us among your Allah the righteous. Elevate us in rank and dignity, Ya Allah. Join us with Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask you, Ya Allah, on this blessed night of Ramadan, that you make us reach Laylatul Qadr, Ya Allah. Do not deprive us of your mercy and your blessings in Laylatul Qadr. Make us among those who stand up at night in prayer in Laylatul Qadr, Ya Allah. Make us among those who worship you and devote themselves to you, Ya Allah. Answer our dua, Ya Allah. Answer our dua, Ya Allah. You're, you're aware of all of our needs and you're aware of our poverty need, Ya Allah, we ask you Allah that you fulfill, fulfill our needs, Ya Allah. Grant us your pleasure, grant us your mercy. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ameen wa sallallahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.